Hey y'all, welcome to my messy little corner. This is Joe. I want to have a little chat with you. Uh, one of the things I wanted to chat about was the meaning of off the grid. I, it means about a thousand different things to a thousand different people. Um, to me, it's really quite simple. We have a power grid, the national power grid. That's where we all get our electricity from. So, if you're producing your own electricity, be it solar, wind, water, generator, whatever. You aren't on the grid. You're producing your own. And it doesn't mean that you're, you know, withdrawing from society. It doesn't mean you're not on the internet anymore. It doesn't mean you're running from anybody or hiding from the FBI. You're simply off the grid. That, it's that simple. And you know, I tell people I'm building an off-grid cabin and the first response is generally who are you hiding from? I'm hiding from nobody. If I'm producing my own electricity and the grid goes down, you know, or a storm blows through and knocks out electricity in our rural area, I'll still have electricity. I'll still have power. That's the whole thing. That's all there is to it. Um, it doesn't mean you're going to sit around a, a, a cabin with candle lights and go down to the creek bottom to take a bath or wash clothes. None of that kind of stuff. No primitive lifestyle. Just simply supplying my own electric. That's a bill I don't have to pay. I think it's been perpetuated to mean all these other things by the media, by marketers, uh, advertisers, YouTube channels, you know, all these YouTube channels want to somehow have off the grid in either the title of their video or the title of their channel, you know, because it's like a catchphrase. I don't want to say like clickbait, but it's a searchable thing. So let's get that in our title. I don't know if it does any good or not, but that's what they try. Um, but that's my opinion of what off the grid means. Plain and simple. If you think it means something else, tell me. I'd like to know. I'm curious about it. Uh, another thing, just exactly like it, is the overuse of homestead uh, for YouTube channels. Uh, to me, a homestead is a piece of land that you work and you harvest your own food. You know, you have your chickens, your livestock. You are self-sustaining. You know, not that you will never have to go to a grocery store. I mean, you will have to go to the stores and do things. But homesteading, to me, is, number one, a lot of work. But, like I said, you're, you're growing your own food. You're, you're canning your own food. You're responsible for your own self 
sufficiency. Now, I don't know how you can be such and such homestead living in an apartment. You want a homestead someday, that's great. But don't have me click on your homestead channel and find out you live in an apartment and you're living the homestead lifestyle. It's a lie. It's like I've seen some channels that are living the off-grid lifestyle. While they're plugged into the grid, by the way, and getting electric. They're just living the off-grid lifestyle. I don't know. You know, I, I don't think I need to come, Lucy, to your homestead channel to watch four videos a month of my grocery haul at Sam's or my grocery haul at Aldi's. What I want to see is your grocery haul from your garden. You know, show me what you grew. Show me how you're going to feed your family off of what came out of your, your, your yard. Not your $400 you spent at Sam's Club. Not your Costco haul. You know? That's where, once again, people are just using Homestead as a, a clickable, searchable word. You know? And there's thousands and thousands of Homestead channels. Excuse me that are guilty of that. I don't know. I don't get it. Um, I've got my cabin out there. I guess next spring I dig a little garden there by my solar panels and guess what? Now St. Bernard Acres is the off-grid homestead. You know? I it just I think that's another thing. It's a lie. I want to learn to homestead. I want to be a homesteader. I am not one. I'm not going to claim to be one, and St. Bernard Acres is not going to claim to be a homestead, because it's not. Uh, until it becomes a homestead, I will never claim that as my homestead. So, that's just how I feel about that. I think it's just there's so much, basically, mis... <laughs> Lucy, Lucy, Lucy. Um, there's just so much, you know, lying on YouTube, I guess. You know? And it takes a lot of work to have a homestead. Uh, a garden, a vegetable garden, doesn't make your land a homestead. This is my opinion, again. I think real homesteaders, I have so much respect for them because I see how much work it is. But I also see what they accomplish. And I'm very impressed by that. So I respect them. I don't respect you if you're calling yourself a homestead and you, you don't even have a garden, you know. Hey, you. Hey. Lucy. <laughs> she has to climb over everything. This place is a mess because Alex is home and just everything is, is in disarray. And she's got to climb over it all. I, I watch these channels. I mean, you know, they're homesteading. But they're asking you, you know, to donate to my PayPal button. What? What do you want? What do you want? Huh? You're just a curious cat, aren't you? You just got to check out everything, don't you? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm living the, on my homestead. But I need you to donate to my PayPal button. Or 
my Amazon wish list or come to my live streams and do the super chat and give me money uh, get a job you know I, I, I want to have a homestead out there if I could get on here and beg people to send me money and send me things then maybe I could live at St. Bernard Acres and act like I'm a homesteader. But I can't do that. Um, I don't know. You know, you do, and, and these people do two or three videos a day. They do, you know, live streams every night. And it's like, how do they do anything else? I mean, You know, I mean, what's your life? Have a life. <laughs> I, uh, it's hard for me to do a video every few days. Um, because I don't videotape everything I do. I have friends that I go visit. I have friends come and visit me. I go to work. Gail goes to work. We have time together. Uh, the last few weekends, we've been out the cabin every weekend. Me and Nick and Alex, or me and Gail, or all of us, we're cooking on the fire pit. We're spending the night out there. And that's our time. I mean, that's, you know, we're not doing any projects, really, uh, that are, are video worthy. Uh, I'm not going to walk around every day and say, oh, well, this is my uh, solar panels, this is my garden, this is my chicken coop. Today I got 10 eggs. Uh, yeah, my garden's really growing. Every day. I'm not going to give you a weather report every day, you know. I guess there's some people that like it, and for some people that's probably their social life, so who am I to complain? Um, I just don't understand it. Now, this weekend, this is Friday. Tomorrow I'm heading out there. I'm going to meet Nick. We're going to finish putting the Luan down on the floor. Put a window in the bathroom. And I'll tell you this. I'm not going to tell you graphically why I need a window in the bathroom. But I've lived with me for 63 years. I need a window in the bathroom. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, but yeah, we're going to stick a, a window in there, finish up all the luan, and get ready. Gail and I are going to go out Sunday to mow. She's going to mow and everything. And we're going to put the tile down on the floor. Um, and start getting... I, I By... The end of August, everything's going to be done there, and it's going to be totally livable. I'll have my rain catchment, I'll have all my solar done, and I, could, I will be living out there. I keep telling Gail, close your ears, Lucy. You might not want to hear this. I'm going to move out there. I'm going to come into town every three or four days, take a shower, get my mail, pick up supplies. And leave her here with the cats. <laughs> I'm just going to live in the cabin. But uh, this weekend we'll be cooking out. We'll be grilling, you know. And, and I may wind up spending the night Saturday night. I haven't decided yet. And I'll try to shoot some video for you guys. Um, I like shooting video. I like making videos. It's fun. But I don't want to... Uh, shoot videos for the sake of shooting videos and you know if I'm doing a particular project yes I'll show you what I'm doing All right. and the biggest reason for doing that um, yeah I get a check every month from YouTube and that's great I love it it's not a lot <laughs> I still work but it's pretty cool getting that every month What's way more important than that check I get is the feedback I get and the comments I get when I talk about these projects I'm doing. 
I've been showing you a lot of, you know, the solar panels I bought, the equipment I bought, the battery bank I'm putting together, and talking about how I'm going to do this. And I was getting ready to do something a certain way, and somebody comments, no, 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 you can't do that. You know, you have to do this. And I realized I could have destroyed my battery bank. Or my solar panels, if I had done it the way I thought I was supposed to. This guy who made the comment saved that, you know. And that's what I like about my YouTube channel more than the money. Uh, as I was building that cabin out there, so much of that stuff is used wood, you know, supplies I could pick up here cheap and try to put it out. I'm not a cabin builder, I'm not a home builder. And I would talk about how I was doing things and somebody would comment and say, no, 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 you, you should do it this way. It's more structurally sound or it's safer or it'll look better or it'll work better. Those kind of things I find invaluable because I don't know a lot of what I'm doing. But I read these comments all the time. And uh, I learn from it. Which is... Uh, the the best part about the YouTube channel. I don't get on there and say, I'm going to teach you how to do this. I will teach you how I'm doing it or how I understand something and, you know, work it from there. But I will not be having a schedule of when I'm going to upload a video. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of these people went to these Patreon channels where they want the, the people to pay a, a monthly fee to get videos. And I would never do that because, number one, I don't, I don't want to feel obligated to you that I have to do a certain number of videos. Or I guarantee you I'm not good enough at what I do or my videography skills to charge for that. You know, I'm not going to beg you for support. I'm not going to give you a wish list, my Amazon wish list for you to buy all this stuff for me. Um, I don't know. I don't get it. But that's, again, that's me, my opinion only, how I operate. Now, I did want to mention, because it's just a random chat thing. I'm just talking about various things. So, if you don't like this too bad, <laughs> you can turn it off. Um, I talked about these guys who, who do two or three videos a day and all the uh, 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 live streams and all this kind of stuff. Like, this is their life. They don't have any other life. It reminded me, back in the day, I'm talking the late 80s, early 90s, and I don't know how many of you guys had computers back then, but this is pre-internet days. And I started out with, you know, my 300 Bob modem on a local bulletin board service, Cincinnati bulletin board service. And it's just simply a text-based thing where you could log on, post messages, read messages, you know, uh, ask a question, answer a question, you know, stuff like that. Strictly text-based, no pictures or graphics or anything. And then, I don't know, early 90s, we got, what was it, Prodigy, CompuServe, uh, all of these services, they weren't the internet, uh, mind you, it, it, that you could get to the internet through them. But they were their own little worlds, I guess. The big one was America Online when AOL came out. And I thought about this because I was always on AOL. And I noticed back then even, a lot of these people, that became their um, 
social activity. Their social interaction became America Online. Because I had the chat rooms, you know. And I'll tell you a funny story. They used to put out these discs, three and a half inch floppies. I never saw it on a five and a quarter inch floppy, but I always saw it, you know. Every magazine had a floppy disk in it for 10 free hours on America Online. And after the 10 hours was up, you had to sign up, give me your credit card number to keep the service going. And there wasn't a, 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 like a service provider or anything like that. You dialed your modem directly into America Online and you connected that way. So you had to set up a screen name. So I've got stacks and stacks of these discs. And uh, it was kind of funny because, you know, there's a little tab on a three and a half inch floppy disk. You pop that tab out, and that disc is protected. You can't write on that disc anymore. Well, if you put a piece of electrical tape over it, you got a floppy disk that you can format and use. I never had to buy a floppy disk. I had stacks of AOL disks. I put a piece of tape over. Um, I don't know how many people knew that. But what I would do, don't tell them I did this. They may still be looking for me. I don't know. But I kind of doubt I was the only one. I had a friend who got this program that generated fake credit card numbers. So, the discs from AOL, the problem with it was if you didn't sign up, you made a screen name, you got 10 hours with it. And at the end of that 10 hours, you had to reload a disc Make up a new screen name. So if you had a group in your chat room and they all knew your screen name, well, when you put the new disc in, you would have to tell them, you know, somehow let them know what your new screen name is. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Um, so I got this program that would generate fake credit card numbers. Put the disc in, sign up, get my 10 free hours, at the end of that, fill out the form, run this program, get a fake credit card number, put that in, voila. It took AOL back then about a week and a half to two, two and a half weeks to figure out that was a fake credit card number. And then they would cancel your account. account and you put in another disc. Set up a new one. He could do with that. Uh, you know, I mean, that's just the kind of stuff we did back then. Because, you know, twenty dollars a month for AOL was a lot of money at, at the time. You know, to us. So we figured out ways to get around it. But anyway, back to my story. That's the problem with me having these chats. I just randomly go off into all kinds of directions and have to keep reining myself back. They, uh, talking about the people that, that, that their social life became chat rooms and the internet. And I guess for some people, it was therapeutic, um, albeit Freudian in a certain way. There was a certain amount of therapy to it. So I understand that. I don't need therapy like that. I, like I said, I have a life. Some of you guys that live on this damn YouTube, you need to experience life once in a while. Don't, uh, don't think this is it. Um, I just, again, that's my opinion on, you know, what started out off the grid. And then homesteading, and then AOL stories, and uh, getting addicted to the internet, and all this kind of crap. And, you know, here I am. One other thing I want to touch base on. If you've gone this far, you may as well listen to this as well. 
wearing a mask when you leave your house. Do I think it's necessary? No. Do I think it's helpful? No. Do I think it's the government trying to control something? You know what? They already control you. They make you get your own unique identification number. They charge you taxes. They make you follow the law. Um, they have your address. They have all the information about you. This little mess thing is nothing. Um, it helps induce panic, which is what I think the primary goal right now is, is to induce panic. Why do I wear my mask? Not because I'm told to, but I think it might help put other people at ease. And I'm all for that, because there are some people who are scared. And don't say, well, if you're scared, don't leave your house. You have to leave your house. There are things you have to do. So it's not fair to tell somebody, if you don't feel safe out there, don't leave your house. You know, some people have to. You have to go get your medicine. You have to go get groceries. You have to, you know, go get gas. Um, I'll put my mask on. Even though when I go to Lowe's or I go to Kroger's or wherever, half the people don't have a mask. Even though it's mandated now in our state. Um, I do it because the old people that live across the street from me have to go out. They're nervous. They're scared. You know? And if we cross paths and it makes them feel a little safer to see a mask on my face, I will do it. Because it helps them out. I know it doesn't do anything for me. I don't pretend it does. But I'm not going to refuse to wear it on false reasons, if you will. Um, like I said, it makes people feel more relaxed and more at ease. So I will do that for them. Not for me. But I like other people. So I'm not going to tell you don't wear a mask. I'm not going to tell you you have to wear a mask. I'm not telling you anything like that. I'm just telling you my reasons for wearing the mask. Uh, you know, I, I went to the gas station the other day. And I ran in. Their pump wasn't working. The credit card thing. Usually I get out, put my card in, pump my gas. That wasn't working, so I had to run inside. I took a $20 bill in there to get uh, $20 worth of gas on pump number five or whatever. I didn't have my mask on. So I don't, you know, I mean, I forgot it. I didn't do it intentionally. I just didn't even think about it. And nobody said anything. It wasn't like I was kicked out or anything. But I do try to take other people's feelings and thoughts into consideration, and I'll wear it. If you think I'm wrong for doing that, that's okay. You know, I'm looking out for you. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's my whole take on the, on the mask thing. And I think it's all going to be over with, you know, after November anyway. Hopefully. Uh, let's see. I don't think there's anything else I want to waste your time with. Just, you know, I got off of work early. I'm sitting here at home and. I love to do, got bored. <laughs> and I thought it would bore you guys. But if you like this, I appreciate that. That's what I do this for, is to try to entertain you guys, give you things to think about, give you a sounding board. If you want to talk about something, there's all the comments wide open. I try very hard to answer comments. If it's a question, I will always answer the question. You deserve that. You're giving me your time by watching my videos and asking me. You deserve me answering your questions and responding as much as I can to your comments. Because uh, you guys mean that much to me. I've got over four 
million views now on this little channel. And I'm close to 15,000 subscribers. Blows me away. Um, and a, a lot of you, I can say, I really, I enjoy our little bit of time to interact with each other. Um, those of you that have channels, I love it, you know. Um, I appreciate what you do because I know how hard it can be to make videos. Um, and I'm talking not videos where you just walk around the yard with a camera pointed at you, show around once in a while, and then run in and upload it from your camera. That's not what I'm talking about making videos. Those don't even belong to YouTube channels as far as I remember. That's just vlogs is all that is. Um, but to sit down and actually, you know, edit the video, it takes time. Um, I enjoy doing it. That's why I think I, I, I shoot a lot more stuff than I actually use. And I've done... Uh, a whole shoot, if you will, a video doing something. I get it on the computer, I start piecing it together, and it comes out like crap. I mean, I didn't do stuff right, it looks like crap, and I can't make it look good. I just dump it. So, well, that project wasn't that important. Next time I shoot a video, I say, oh, by the way, I did this. Uh, so I try to put out some kind of quality stuff. Um, and I know how difficult that can be sometimes. So you guys that do it, I really appreciate it. I'm glad you do it. I, I enjoy immensely watching your videos. Uh, I try to respond in kind. Give you something worth watching. But, you know, if I entertain you, if I make you laugh, uh, if I make you think, if I make you mad and you want to voice your opinion, I love it. Subscribe to me. Yeah, I mean... You talk about a channel of randomness, this is it. Um, this is not a channel about anything. It's just me doing dumb shit. <laughs> but, uh, I, you know, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that little button or that bell so, that, you know, when I put up a new video, which you never know when, uh, you, you get notified that I did it. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. Uh, I don't care. I just hope you enjoy it. I, I want to make people laugh. That's what I do. That's how... Uh, that's how I want people, you know... I just want everybody to have some fun. That's all. And... We can do this. You know, uh, I hope you stick around though. We're going wild at that cabin. That's going to be done. And I am going to wind up shooting a lot of video going through all these solar steps and the water rain catchment. Because I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm going to be watching intently these comments. So I'm going to be depending on you guys to make sure I do it right. But, uh, again, hope you enjoyed this. If you waited all this time, thank you. You know, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate it. And no, I don't have a P.O. box for you to send gifts to or you to send money to. I love the fact these guys can't afford anything. But it seems they all can afford P.O. boxes. So they get stuff sent to them. <laughs> I don't have a bill box, so don't send me nothing. Um, but yeah, this is all the support I need. This is my kind of support from this channel. So we're all good. I'm getting the hell out of here. I'm tired of this. This is Joe from St. Bernard Acres. I'm out.